This is, believe it or not, a home-built, do-it-yourself, slide-in camper that I built over the course of the last three years. The camper is primarily made of one-inch thick sheets of structural honeycomb made by Nitacor, covered with 18-ounce stitched biaxial fiberglass material as the main structural covering. This specific camper was designed for a factory special order 2000 Dodge Dakota Sport with the one-ton payload package that my wife and I bought 18 years ago. This video replaces the previous video to correct some of the item descriptions, improve sound quality, provide a basic build material throughout, and finally combine all the features along with the as-is specifications. I guess my truck camper history started as a kid with my dad's rig, a 63 or 64 FC 150, and that had an early pop-up camper. That rig, believe it or not, had a Ford 289 V8 crammed between the seats, and my parents traveled all over the place with the five of us. Finally on my own, and after spending a couple years laying on the ground in a tent, my wife and I bought a used 1991 North Star slide-in that weighed about 1,100 pounds empty. This turned out to be a pretty good fit for our 92 Dodge Dakota. Um, we like the camper reliability a lot, uh, with the most expensive repair being a water pump. But uh, our family of three soon was to be four, so we needed a bigger truck and didn't want to give up the camper. But eventually, as the kids got bigger, the camper got smaller with its small truck wheelbase of 38 inches. So after 13 years, we sold that camper for $1,900 and bought a 2004 Viking pop-up trailer that weighed 1,800 pounds dry and, in my opinion, way too much money. For the most part, this trailer was okay, but lacked ground clearance for off-road use, time-consuming to set up, couldn't load the refrigerator in the down position, and one big gripe, every time we camped on the beach, we got stuck, the axle would drag, I never got stuck with my truck camper, even when I was pulling a small sailboat. So this led us back to finding a truck camper built for a mid-sized truck, which is nearly impossible. We could have sold our existing truck, bought a larger truck, and then a larger camper, but our truck had relatively low mileage, completely paid for, reliable, manual, 5-speed, low maintenance V8, cheap insurance, cheap registration, and seems to always get 17 miles to the gallon whether it's loaded or not. Plus, building a camper gave me a chance to learn some new skills. Just like most of you started with YouTube, and at the time, three years ago, there just really wasn't anything to look at, and I hate to say it, but most of the finished designs that I came across look like crap. I wanted to build a custom hard-sided camper that was under a 1,000 pounds, strong bathroom privacy, under bed storage, and easy to maintain. Then one day I came across the Super Camper site, followed their blog from start to finish, and immediately went looking for the Nitacore material. I found the structural honeycomb laminated honeycomb sheet that they were using for around $300 a sheet and went, holy crap, that's expensive. So after some more research, I found the unlaminated version for just under $60. I then located a 50 inch by 100 foot roll of biaxial fiberglass material on eBay for around $350 with shipping. I decided to use the epoxy over the fiberglass resin because of the odor, longer working time, and strength of the epoxy. The actual design of the camper started with all the factory documentation that came with the truck. These documents included the specific exterior dimensions and even camper loading specs. After verifying the crucial dimensions, I began to design with paper and pencil, but uh, I found this is way too difficult and probably was not accurate. So for the heck of it, went out looking for a 3D program to help with this and found and downloaded a free, simple, and powerful program called SketchUp. And I used this to manipulate my camper design to best fit standard materials that one could find at local hardware stores. Uh, in my design, I wanted the water tank in the front for weight and strength reasons. And since the 22-gallon fuel tank on my truck was on the left side, I decided to put the heavier cabinets on the right side. I also needed the AC to DC converter to be on the front left to match up with the existing 12-volt harness that came from the truck. Uh, because it was winter and couldn't do any work out in the garage, this gave me opportunity to look for other crucial camper items to help finish my design. A electrical distribution charger made by Atwood was found on sale for $40, so I couldn't pass that up. This would definitely help with the install of all the future power connections. Then one night, looking for a sink, I came across a combo two-burner propane stove uh, for about $270. dollars 
Yes, this is expensive, but this particular item made everything else in my design fall in place. And after finding a 15 gallon water tank, I went back and forth trying to decide what delivery system to install, uh, your pressure or your lift pump. I've had both and eventually chose a simpler lift pump, which does however limit your choice of faucets that you can choose from. Uh, that's because every faucet with this kind of system has to have a switch in it. But the good news is you don't have to listen to the annoying pump trying to maintain pressure on and off throughout the night. I was able to utilize the area behind the rear wheel wells to include closet slash bathroom and an area for the furnace. Some of the items would have to wait like the camper jacks but uh, designed in generous support areas for these. And, of course, one of the last things to tackle was a basic wiring diagram. This is the Nidacore NIDA, one inch thick, honeycomb structures throughout, and it's uh, pretty stiff, even without the fiberglass material. Pretty light, um, it's bendable. If you needed some more complex curves, you could probably make it more complex if you were to make some, you know, cuts in there. To stiffen this up, obviously you need some material on the outside, and I've used this 18 ounce bilateral fiberglass material. I used Aeromarine number 300 and number 21 as the hardener. Uh, Two to one mixture, anywhere from a half cup to three quarter cup. You don't want to go any more than that. Um, the chemical reaction heats up and it sets the stuff off way too fast. But if you keep working with half cup intervals, you can actually get a whole sheet of fiberglass, a seven by eight, wetted. Uh, cheap economy brushes, you want to, once you mix it up, pour it out, keep mixing it, wet the material. And lay your fiberglass down. And I have a, a roller that rolls it into this Nidacore fabric that's on top of this. And then once that is all rolled in, go back over it one more time with the epoxy. Uh, one thing to note, you can use that insulation, um, that foam spray on stuff. Um, you get the stuff for the windows, it's a polyurethane, and actually this plastic is a type of polyurethane, so the two work good together, and phenomenal. It, it glues these pieces together. Uh, you could buy the stuff already laminated, but then what do you do when you join up two pieces? Then you have to put something over the top of the two laminated pieces, then you got this bump to sand out. This way I can keep everything flat with the fiberglass material. Um, I also use that spray on foam on all my edges that were going to join up with another edge. So sprayed the foam on, then came back with a actually just run it through the table saw. This stuff cuts really easy on a table saw. And as far as strength, I'll give a real quick demonstration on strength. You already know that it's lighter. This piece here has got one piece, uh, one uh, layer of fiberglass on both sides. Uh, in the bottom of my truck design, there are two layers of fiberglass from the bottom of the camper up to the top of the bed rails, because I figured that's where all the weight of the camper was going to be. That happens to be the rear window I cut out, but that stuff is stiff, strong, unbelievably. So I've seen other camper designs where they've got quarter inch plywood on the outside, some kind of framing on the inside, and then they put some decorative uh, anywhere from 3 16 to a quarter inch siding. Or... Anyway, I'll, I'll demonstrate the strength on this. I'm just going to step on it up jumping. I mean, you know, I'll give it a little jump here. Totally worthless. I would never build a camper out of something that's going to rot. Um, when it comes time to actually joining these pieces up, 
I usually cure the stuff in big sheets and then bring the sheets together. Um, take the epoxy, mix it with this fume silica, and uh, you mix it into a paste. Put the paste on the seam, paste on here, and I made these squares with some clamps. And just use regular old saran wrap to keep it from sticking to the square. Clamp it, clamp it, let it dry. And anytime I had a, a joint, I usually came back with another layer of fiberglass. That's about it. Here is a quick 3D tutorial on the camper build. Obviously, I started with the floor of the camper, adding a single piece to the floor. Next, added the pieces to clear the truck's bed rail, followed by the water tank support. Another layer of fiberglass was added to the bottom half of these pieces, as I figured this would eventually support the weight of the camper. Lower cab support piece was then added, along with the framing for the water tank. The cab over support was then constructed using 2x4s, 1x4s, and 1x2s. I then worked on the lift up bed storage area as I knew this would be difficult to install once the sides were attached. Next installed the back door plane. This was followed by the left panel which included the framing for a one and a half inch window. Then the right side which included wiring for the main light, fan and future solar power. The front pieces were most difficult but definitely worth the effort to add some aerodynamics and some style. Subroof pieces were then added, so all that was left was a single 4x7 sheet on Nitacore. Wiring to the roof was hidden by threading the wire bundle through a drilled channel in the material itself. Lastly, the framed in door was added, and eventually I added some 1x2s to add heavier support to the roof. Okay, that is the uh, front roof, and there's the vent. Future wiring for a solar panel and 1x2s for added support. Uh, I sat up there and installed the roof vent. I felt no flexing or anything else. And we're going to scroll down to one of the exterior lights. Alright, that is the lower vent on my refrigerator. Uh, you can see the LP connection, you can see the drain for the freezer. And up in there you can see the 110 connection. Once again, this is a three-way LP DC electric and 120 AC power. You scroll back out, you see the upper vent. Looking at the back of the camper, you've got a door stop. And the other exterior light. And locking door handle to the right we have a closet or a uh, pseudo bathroom most of it will be used as a closet got a uh, of course my cheap LED lights there's enough room in here for a porta potty and Probably enough privacy for somebody to use this without everybody else getting out. Um, everything's on a spring hinge, and this cabinet or door, I should say, has a magnet as well. And then when you get in the camper, you can access the closet from up here. Turn those off. There's the overall interior of the camper. All right, here's our cooktop, sink, two burner stove combo. Uh, over the sink lights. The cabinets have lights, and all my drawers have lights. I'll show you that in a minute. Burner one. Burner two. Drawers, lights in them, lock. Them. Of course, my under the sink cabinet as well. Storage above the refrigerator.
taller storage on this side. There's also two USB and another 12 volt aux port. Dometic refrigerator, obviously. And this is where the LP and CO2 detector are hidden. Five inch memory foam mattress. It's about a small queen. Storage under the bed, about a four inch depth. Gas struts, light. Two frosted side windows. There's the Max Air fan. Storage above the water tank. And then we've got uh, USB ports, 12 volt aux, shelf to store your devices that you're charging. The uh, Atwood 30 amp AC to DC converter sits there. And we have the 120 outlet there as well. 20 pound LP tank and the 12 volt water pump and the 15 gallon water tank are all located in this area towards the front of the camper. And we'll give you a better view of this cabinet while we're here. Pots and pans, sinks, drainage, all that good stuff. You can see some of the uh, wire bundle towards the back there. All these cabinets have the uh, magnetic switch that uh, open when they come together and obviously create the circuit when they're pulled apart. You can get these on DigiKey, I think they're like a dollar and a half a piece or something like that. Tip out window. curtain okay underneath the seat cushion here towards the back of the camper I have a box that's ready for a furnace it has the LP plumbed in the DC wires ready and of course the temperature control wires that go towards the front of the camper the 2x2 two two that's above the logo is for future bunk bed and uh, it's framed into the 2x4 which is in the corner which is where the uh, jack support is. I don't have the bed built yet but I want to make it strong enough so an adult could sleep up there. L Life stands for Living Life. Uh, I originally wanted Light Life but somebody took that name or a name very similar. 7.75 the first seven stands for a seven foot box. The .75, it's just a designator that it's 75 inches wide, the body of the camper.